All right, section 6.5, we're going to take a be looking at round by and squares. Um, a couple things that you should be able to do by the end of this lesson is to first recognize and apply the properties of rhombus, recognize the, and apply the properties of a square, and then we're going to determine whether parallelograms are either a rhombi or if they're a square, um, or if they're a rhombus or a square, I should say. So, so far in this chapter, when we've been working with quadrilaterals, we've talked about um, properties of parallelograms. We've talked about properties of rectangles now. We know that parallelograms and rectangles are quadrilaterals. Um, quadrilaterals, properties of a quadrilateral are, you know, shape that has four sides. It has four interior angles. It has four exterior angles. The interior angles all add up to 360 degrees. The exterior angles all add up to 360 degrees. Those are some of the properties of just what a quadrilateral is. Now, every shape that we've been working with in this chapter so far has those same properties. We spent some time working with a parallelogram which has those seven properties that we've spent so much time on. Now what we want to understand here is that a parallelogram is always going to be a quadrilateral. So, and that's why I've got the little finger pointing up here. But what you have to be careful is that not every quadrilateral out there is a parallelogram. Same thing can be said working with rectangles. A rectangle is always going to be considered a parallelogram. However, not every parallelogram is a rectangle, so we have to be very careful. So now what we want to try and do today is try to fit in a square and a rhombus and where they're going to fit into this whole scheme of things. Most of you probably know what a square is because you've spent so much time with it in your earlier years. Um, we know that a square is, has four congruent sides. We know it has four right angles but a lot of you may not remember exactly what a rhombus is. So I'm going to start there, and we're going to talk about what a rhombus is. It is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So it's very similar to a square. The only thing is, is that it doesn't have to have four 90-degree angles. When you have a quadrilateral with four congruent sides and you have a rhombus, there are a couple other properties that are going to come up with this. First of all, a rhombus is always going to be considered a Parallelogram, um, parallelogram. I can say that right away because all four sides are equal, opposite sides are equal, so that guarantees us that it is a parallelogram. So therefore, when we're looking at the properties, a rhombus has all the properties of a parallelogram. That means all seven of those properties. The one property that sets it aside from being a rectangle is the fact that it has four um, four congruent sides. Not all rectangles have four congruent sides. We know that some rectangles can, but not all of them do. Another thing that's going to happen here is that their diagonals are a bit special, and their diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So that means that it's creating a 90 degree angle between those two diagonals. Now, once again, diagonals here, because these are in a parallelogram, the diagonals do not have to be congruent to each other. If it was a type of a rectangle, then we would see that they're congruent. But right now, we just have that they, um, they will bisect each other. They're going to share the same midpoint. And then now they're going to make a 90 degree angle if it's in a rhombus. Another thing that comes up with working with properties of rhombus is the fact that your diagonals bisect opposite angles. Bisect, um, we've seen this word a lot, that means that it's cutting two, cutting one angle in half or it's creating two congruent angles. So this angle right here and this angle right here, those are congruent. And because opposite angles are congruent, that means that all four of these angles here will be congruent to each other. If I look at the other side here, this angle and this angle, those are going to be congruent along with the two on the opposite side. So diagonals bisect opposite angles. What we have to just be really careful, and like I've said earlier in this, is that when we're working with the rhombi, they do not have to follow the same properties of rectangles. They don't have to have, um, they don't necessarily have congruent diagonals. They do not necessarily have four 90 degree angles. But it is possible that they could. And if they did have diagonals that were congruent, and if they had four 90-degree angles, what that would bring us to then is that would bring us to a square. 
A square, as we know, is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, and it has four right angles. So what's happening here is because a square has four congruent sides, that makes a square a rhombus. And what can happen here is that a square is always going to be a rhombus, but a rhombus cannot always be a square because the rhombus doesn't necessarily have to have the four 90 degree angles. Kind of think about this in terms of a rectangle. A square is always a rectangle, but a rectangle is not always going to be a square. That's kind of how we can work this all out. Now, because when, when you think about all this, the fact that a square is a rectangle, the fact that a square is a rhombus, when we start looking at the properties, the properties are everything that we've been working with in this chapter so far. A square is a parallelogram, so that means it follows all the properties of parallelograms, all seven of those. We also know that squares have all the properties of a rectangle opposite sides being equal to each other, which we've got four congruent sides. We know that it's going to have four 90 degree angles. And the last piece of information that's really important about working with rectangle, with a rectangle here is the fact that the diagonals are congruent to each other. So like a rectangle, a square is going to have congruent diagonals. A rhombus does not have to have congruent diagonals. So that's the difference between those two. Because we have four congruent sides, and that's the definition of a rhombus, squares have all the properties of a rhombus as well. And really the only properties that we got to were the fact that all the angles are bisected. So if I have a 90 degree angle here, that means that all of these angles here are going to have to be 45 degrees. I have no other option. Also with this, because I know the diagonals bisect the angles, I also know that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. And so we're going to create a 90 degree angle here. So what ends up happening here is we end up with these four congruent triangles within this square. The fact that diagonals we know bisect one another with this triangle here, we know that this segment here and this segment are going to be congruent. This segment and this segment are congruent. All right. We end up here with four isosceles triangles that we're going to be working with. So I know that we've put in a lot of information and we've kind of summed up pretty much all the different types of parallelograms that we possibly have. To kind of put it into a full picture here, I um, kind of made this little flow chart. We've got our quadrilaterals. Everything underneath the quadrilateral here, all four of these have four sides to it. More general, we can, or more specific, I should say, we can talk about parallelograms. Every parallelogram is a quadrilateral. Then if we look at later on, like I said earlier, we know that every rectangle is a parallelogram. And here's now where it just gets goofy. Goofy. We know that every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. We know that with a rhombus here, a rhombus is always going to be a parallelogram. It's a type, rhombus is always a parallelogram. Not every parallelogram is a rhombus, however. And then what happens here is a square, it's possible for a square to be a rhombus. Or, yeah, a square, I'm sorry. It's possible for um, a rhombus, a square is always going to be a rhombus with its four sides. So what's happening here is if we have a square, a square is really everything that we see on this page. A square is a rhombus, a square is a rectangle, a square is a parallelogram, and a square is a quadrilateral. If you're just given a rhombus, a rhombus is not necessarily a square, it's not necessarily a rectangle, it would only be rhombus, parallelogram, and quadrilateral. What I would suggest at this point, if there's anything that you're not quite sure of, I would go back, look it over, listen to it again, Maybe now that you've taken down the notes, just go back and kind of watch it and listen um, just to kind of reiterate some of the things. Maybe there might be something that you missed. 
And then next, what I want to show us is how do we go about proving this? How do we start proving this in a coordinate plane when you're trying to look at a rhombus versus a square? And when you think about it, we have talked about so many different ways of proving these quadrilaterals right now that you might be getting really mixed up with some of them. And I want to try and simplify this for you and try and give you some um, things to look for and what are the easiest ways of proving this. And then as we start putting this all together, we'll have a conversation as far as, okay, how can we make this really easy if we're trying to prove what type of quadrilateral this is? Um, really with just one or two tests, you'd be able to get there rather than doing the distance formula you know, 10 times or the midpoint formula. So when you look at a rhombus, we know all the properties that it follows. Same thing goes with a square. And when you're trying to prove these two, I have three different suggestions. And the three suggestions are really going to be doing the exact same thing. And just from doing these things, you're going to be able to prove whether it's a rhombus or, or if it's a square. My first option is going off of the fact that we know that a rhombus and a square have four congruent sides. Well, just by using the distance formula four times, that does not give me quite enough information because it could be a rhombus or it could be a square. To prove that it's a square, we need to show that there are um, our 90 degree angles and that the diagonals are congruent. Rhombus, it doesn't have to happen. So an easy way to go one step further from this is to use the distance formula total of two more times, showing that the diagonals of us uh, are or are not congruent. If we can show that the diagonals are congruent to each other, then that's going to tell us that we have a square. If we can show that the diagonals are not congruent to each other, well then we're going to have a rhombus. So an example that I have right here is you'll notice that I have a rhombus over on the left and I have a square on the right. Um, the fact that I see, you know, horizontal and vertical lines, if you have a graph, I mean, I just counted the units. I didn't use my distance formula for them. But notice that both of the shapes here, they both have congruent sides, so we know it has to be one of the two. And then all I did here was I found the distance or the length of the diagonals. And the fact that the diagonals on my quadrilateral on the left are not congruent to each other, this means that we are going to have a rhombus. The fact that my um, diagonals here over on the right are congruent to each other, that tells us that we're going to have a square. Just by finding the congruent sides, that's not enough information for us because it can be one or the other. A second option that you could have here is to show that diagonals are perpendicular to each other. And then we can also work with the diagonals showing that they are congruent or not congruent to help us determine which one's going to happen. Showing diagonals are perpendicular to each other, that just takes it away from your quadrilateral, away from being a just any normal parallelogram, and it takes it away from being a rectangle. And it takes it into these two options. When I found the slopes of our diagonals, here I got negative 2 and 1 half. Those are opposite reciprocals to each other so that I know that my diagonals are perpendicular. Same thing over here. I have negative 1 and positive 1. Those diagonals are perpendicular as well. So I know it has to be between a rhombus and a square. So once again, I just used my same distance formula from up above and found the distance of my diagonals. And the fact that they were not congruent on the one on the left means once again we have a rhombus and the one over here on the right it's going to be a square because they're the same. The third and final option that I would suggest working with proving is again working with diagonals and showing that they're perpendicular and then what you could also do is you could go off of working with 90 degree angles. A square has to have four 90 degree angles. A rhombus does not have to have that. So by using our slope formula a few more times, we can show here that we have a rhombus or a rectangle. So I still have my slopes of my diagonals, and I've seen that those are already perpendicular to each other. So we know that this these are my two options. Then I go to finding the slope of each of the four sides. 
noticing here that, okay, great, I have opposite sides are congruent or parallel to each other. That means that we have a parallelogram, but the fact that they're not opposite reciprocals to each other is telling us that, well, we can't have a, rec a square or a rectangle in this matter for this problem. It's got to be, be, now the diagonals are perpendicular, so that tells us it's a rhombus. Over here, when I look at horizontal and vertical lines, horizontal lines always have a slope of zero. Vertical lines are always undefined. Those are opposite reciprocals to each other. Um, if you think about it as zero over one, undefined is anything over zero. And so here I see, okay, I must have 490 degree angles, so that's great. And that's telling us that we have a rectangle, or in our case here, since the diagonals, um, because the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, we have a square. So when you start looking at all this, it's you're trying to work through and you're proving this. What I want you to do for class, uh, for tomorrow, is... I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to bring in to bring in with you this piece of paper and I want you to determine whether parallelogram EFGH is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. And you can prove and you can use any of the things that we've been talking about today. If you want to come up with your own, that's fine. But all I want you to be able to do is not just show me graphing it out, okay, this is what I think. I want you to show me using arithmetic, using the formulas that we've been working with to show me that, yes, this is a rhombus, it's a rectangle, or it's a square. And that's what I'd like you to come into class with for tomorrow. If you have any questions on anything, um, make a note of it. Please, please, please make sure that you ask me. I can definitely go over something in class. Um, otherwise, feel free to watch this as many times as you need to. So we'll see you in class.